last episode. Hi, Nina. Thanks so much for having me. I set out to understand what's in a vape and what they're doing to our health. But I kind of glossed over the fact that I had strolled into a shop and bought a disposable nicotine vape, which is supposed to be illegal. Got the vape. So why is something illegal so readily available at your local corner store? Yeah, I think there is a whole lot of confusion about what's the law, what are the new laws, what are the old laws, how is this any different? In this episode, we're going to look at the changes ahead. No more bubblegum flavours, no more pink unicorns. And those pushing back against the reforms. So that's what I want, that's the outcomes I want, I'll just keep fighting for that. When vapes first entered the Australian market around 2008, they were legislated on a state and territory level, meaning things were pretty haphazard and inconsistent. Technically, nicotine vapes were not allowed to be sold, but they still were. So eventually, the federal government stepped in, reinforcing the fact that it's illegal to sell a nicotine vape without a prescription anywhere in Australia. That was already the law at a state level in every state in Australia. So this was just clarifying, nope, this applies nationally, this is a federal law. After October 1st, we thought, okay, let's go down to our local shop, see what's happening. Well, vapes are still widely available for sale. They're everywhere. New vape shops are opening all the time. New convenience retailers popping up. So you think, well, clearly this law really had no impact at all. I wanted to know why this legislation hasn't been working. So I've come to Parliament House to ask the person in charge of regulating these vapes. It's been illegal to buy a nicotine vape without a prescription in Australia for some time. Recently, I walked into a tobacconist and bought one. Why is it still so easy to do that? Well, because there have been legal loopholes, there, there's been this distinction between nicotine vapes, which are illegal, and non-nicotine vapes, which are apparently completely legal. What we know is the only reason people vape is to get the nicotine hit. So what we've seen people overseas bringing these things into Australia do is to try and exploit that loophole, present vapes as being non-nicotine, when actually they contain heaps of nicotine products. How do you tell the difference between a nicotine vape and a non-nicotine vape? You have to test it in a lab. There's no sort of like sniff test we can do at the counter. There's no, they're not labeled correctly. And so enforcement became, if not impossible, a complete nightmare. Industry, they can smell out a loophole and they push it open and make it into a door that they can waltz right through. If you want an example of this, I saw a perfect one when I was at the University of Wollongong. We actually have an example here of one that this has a production date of June 2021. So the new regulations came into place in October of 2021. So this particular product was produced before that. Um, and there's a clear warning label mentioning nicotine um, on the front. So it says this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. And that's very clearly on the front. So this one, exactly the same brand, exactly the same model, two months later, and the word nicotine, no nicotine. has been removed. Okay. So as soon as the regulatory change was announced, these manufacturers immediately shifted mm -hmm. to change their packaging. Um, and this still does contain nicotine, even though it doesn't mention on the packaging anywhere okay. that it does. So the prescription model for nicotine vapes, which has been in place nationally since October 2021, has never been working as it was designed because of this non-nicotine loophole. Which is why last year, the Federal Health Minister introduced some new reforms. No more bubblegum flavours, no more pink unicorns, no more, no more vapes deliberately disguised as highlighter pens for kids to be able to hide them in their pencil cases. The government began their crackdown on disposable vapes this year on January 1st. The new laws introduced for 2024, shut that down, get rid of that loophole and make it really clear, disposable vapes can't be sold, can't be available, none of this back and forth testing, relying on retailers to do the right thing. Retailers have proven they can't do the right thing. They sold illicit products in broad daylight to teenagers. You've known about that loophole for some time. Why has it taken this long to crack down on this loophole? I said that I was really concerned that vaping rates were climbing dramatically among younger people. It's still very new, so we were gathering evidence about how dangerous that was. Originally, we thought we would have to pass legislation through every single parliament in the country, so every state parliament, the parliament here in Canberra, that would have taken a lot of time. So instead what we've managed to do is come up with a regulatory response that allows us just to pass stuff here in Canberra and that will cover the whole field. If this were a simple story, that would be it. There was a loophole in the legislation, the government introduced reforms, problem solved. But this is not a simple story. 
Remember how at the lab in Wollongong, Jody showed me how vape manufacturers tapped into a loophole by removing the word nicotine from their packaging almost immediately after that 2021 reform. Well, there are signs something similar might happen with these new reforms. This is called the I Get Bar. Yeah. Um, so this is the most popular device among young I'm people in Australia, that. and it's clearly, as you can see, it's absolutely everywhere. So this is a really, really popular device. Yeah. Um, so in May of 2023, the health minister announced that um, disposables were going to be banned in yeah. Australia. Within a couple of months of that happening, we saw this device arrive on what the market. What is that? So this is called the I Get Bar Plus. Uh -huh. This is not disposable. What? This is actually a pod device. So this is the battery, and this is the pod. So that's where the liquid is contained. The battery is in this bit and you can see it has a charging port um, directly on the bottom and that can be recharged and then you can just purchase the pods and exchange that. So under the ban of disposable devices, this allowed. is allowed. So this is banned and that's allowed Correct. and they look almost the same. Exactly that one's just right. a bit more circular and it, you can twist off the top. So they're deliberately trying to manipulate the market again um, to get these, to get these into Australia. It's like the government closed the disposable vape door and vape makers just opened a window. But it's possible the government saw this coming because they already have more reforms on the way. From the 1st of March, it will be illegal to import and supply any, any vape that does not comply with TGA standards. The government's crackdown on disposable vape started in January, but from March, the government's going to make it illegal to import any vape without a prescription from a doctor or if it doesn't meet certain criteria. It'd be non-disposable, that it'd be plainly packaged, that it not be flavoured and that have a range of other conditions about nicotine content and the absence of certain chemicals we know to be particularly harmful. But to implement part of these reforms, the government will need to introduce legislation and that legislation will need support from other members of parliament outside the government. I'm not a vapor. I don't encourage my kids or anyone uh, to vape. I don't think it's the right thing to do, but sometimes people are going to do things that you don't think are right. What are your concerns about the government's plan to crack down on illegal nicotine vapes? My main concern is uh, there's already a, a, a vibrant uh, crime supply of vapes. I think a lot of that is ending up in our schools, which is terrible. And now that the government's going to effectively make it illegal uh, uh, to buy a vape from anywhere but a pharmacy, uh, we're only going to supercharge that crime supply network. It's only going to become a worse problem in my view. I don't have a lot of power. <laughs> I'm um, fighting against some of my own party, of course. I was, uh, I think, the only Liberal or National Senator who voted to legalise vapes. I see my job as, as trying to do what I think is right for the country uh, and trying to do right for a lot of people out there who find that vapes are a much easier way to quit smoking than, uh, than smoking itself. So that's what I want. That's the outcomes I want. I'll just keep fighting for that. Next episode, the fight ahead. Are you expecting a fight on these regulations? We always prepare for a fight. We're going to look a bit deeper at the role big tobacco has to play. The tobacco industry has always fought very hard against these sorts of regulations. It is not time for us to pat ourselves on the back and think, oh, job done, tobacco industry beat. No, they'll be back. If I put it down to one thing, it is access and power.